and get started. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha. I am a Girl Program Specialist with Girl Scouts Western Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we will be doing our um, National Ice Cream Day patch today. Um, so as always for our virtual patch programs, we'll be doing three things. Um, we will discover, connect, and take action. For our Discover, we're going to learn about the history of ice cream and National Ice Cream Day. Uh, we are going to connect by making our own homemade ice cream and learning a little bit about the science behind ice cream making. And then for our Take Action, we are going to teach someone else, a friend or family member, how to make ice cream and share our ice cream with our family and friends. Um, so welcome to those of you who are just tuning in. Today we are doing a virtual patch program. We are doing ice cream making. Um, we have people tuning in from all over New York, Texas, Indiana, Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, and then as we go through, I'll let you know what supplies you'll need before we get started. Um, and as always, you can pause the video um, if you need some extra time either to work on making your ice cream or just to go gather some supplies. You can pause the video and then just press play again when you're ready. Okay. So for our Discover, we're going to learn a little bit about the history of ice cream and the history of National Ice Cream Day. Um, if you know any fun facts about ice cream, I'd love to know in the comments as well. I see someone streaming in from Cleveland. Welcome. Okay. So National Ice Cream Day is celebrated the third Sunday of July in the United States. It's a time of year when millions of people all across the country can enjoy one of the most iconic American desserts of all time. This day, as well as National Ice Cream Month, was established by Presidential Proclamation in July of 1984 and continues to be the favorite holiday of children of all ages. And I would say adults as well. I guess that's what children of all ages is. I'm still a child at heart, so I'm very excited to make ice cream. Okay, when is National Ice Cream Day? Um, this year it is Sunday, July 19th, which is this Sunday coming up. Um, so this would be a great way to celebrate National Ice Cream Day by making your own ice cream. Some more history about National Ice Cream Day. In July of 1984, President Ronald Reagan declared the third week of July to be National Ice Cream Month by signing Proclamation 5219. In this proclamation, the president called ice cream the perfect dessert and snack food and stated that over 90% of Americans enjoy it on a regular basis. He also stated in the proclamation that Americans should observe this day with appropriate activities and celebrations, which I think we are doing today by making our own ice cream. And we're also gonna be making an ice cream swap because of course we are Girl Scouts, we make swaps. Okay. According to the International Dairy Foods Association, the United States ice cream industry produces over $10 billion a year in revenue. Another fact that is sure to convince you of the American love for ice cream is the fact that almost 10% of all milk produced by U.S. dairy farmers is used in the production of ice cream. That is crazy, I never knew that. 10% of all milk produced is used for ice cream. Very interesting. Okay, so moving on to some fun facts about ice cream. The largest worldwide consumption of ice cream is in the United States. In the U.S., one average person consumes 48 pints of ice cream per year. Wow, that's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> I guess throughout the year that makes sense, but I can't imagine 48 pints of ice cream in front of me right now. Someone says it takes 12 pounds of milk to make one pound. I actually think we do have this fun fact listed too, so thank you so much for sharing that. 90% um, Ninety percent of American households eat ice cream. It's most everyone. The biggest ice cream sundae was created in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada in 1988. It weighed 24 tons. Oh my gosh. That's so much ice cream. The most popular flavor of ice cream is vanilla. It 
classic, classic. After it comes chocolates, strawberry, cookies and cream, and others. I think that's pretty much what I expected, vanilla, then chocolate. Ice cream cones were invented during 1904's World's Fair in St. Louis, when large demand forced ice cream vendors to find help from nearby waffle vendors. Together they made history. I also never knew that. Ice cream cones date back all the way to 1904. I see lots of wows in the comments. Yeah, I never knew all this about ice cream. So interesting. One of the most unusual ice cream flavors is, oh no, <laughs> hot dog flavored ice cream that was created in Arizona. I don't think I could, I don't think I could eat hot dog flavored ice cream. I think I've heard of bacon ice cream too, which I'm sorry, I really, I really couldn't. <laughs> Let me know if you know of any other strange ice cream flavors. I think I heard that they have Sour Patch Kids ice cream, which sounds a little strange. I don't know how that would be. Someone says they love chocolate. Classic, classic. Okay, next fun fact. The largest ice cream cake weighed, oh gosh, 12,096 pounds. That is crazy. I would love to see a picture of that. And then someone else just mentioned this in the comments, um, but I'll say it again. It takes 12 gallons of milk to create one gallon of ice cream. Interesting. Um, I'd love to see, I'm sure there's all kinds of videos of how ice cream is made. That would be super fun. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a quick little timeline um, of the history of ice cream, and we'll go through it together. Someone says they've heard of crab ice cream, yuck. <laughs> I agree, I don't think I could eat crab flavored ice cream. Okay, so I brought up our timeline. So ice cream goes all the way back to the fifth century BC. Um, ancient Greeks enjoy a dessert similar to ice cream. Very interesting, I did not know ice cream was that old. And then we move on to the 1300s. Um, Marco Polo brings an early form of ice cream to Europe. In the 1700s, ice cream is introduced to America as a, del as a delicacy enjoyed by high society. Oh, so, so a couple people are saying pickle ice cream. Yeah, very strange. I would try it, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, 1776, America's first ice cream parlor opens its doors in New York. In the 1840s, the ice cream churn is invented, making it much easier to make ice cream. Someone says they've heard of bacon flavored ice cream. Oh my goodness, I cannot handle all these flavors. Okay, 1851, the first ice cream plant is open. Then we move on to the 1880s, where the ice cream sundae is born. In 1904, um, which I think we heard about in our fun facts, um, the waffle cone reportedly makes its debut at the World Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. Well, some people are saying broccoli flavored ice cream, corn flavored ice cream, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, then we move on to 1929, where Rocky Road becomes the first widely available flavor other than the classic vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Um, then we move on to 1984, which again we talked about, um, where July is declared National Ice Cream Month. Um, so definitely celebrate by having some ice cream, whether that's today or Sunday, which is the National Ice Cream Day. Someone says chocolate syrup is the most popular topping. I believe that. Okay, and today, next to cookies, Ice cream stands is the best-selling treat in America. Uh, what a long and interesting history that ice cream has that I never knew about. So, so interesting. Um, and there's lots of science behind ice cream making too, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, um, but I encourage you to explore um, all the different videos out there um, with ice cream making and the science behind ice cream. It's really, really interesting. Okay. 
and make sure we don't have any more fun facts. Okay, so the next thing what we, which we have all been waiting for um, is making our own homemade ice cream, um, which I've never done before. So fingers crossed it goes well, wish me luck. Um, someone is asking if this is being recorded. Uh, yes, um, it will be available um, on Facebook right after we're done here today. Um, and we'll also have it posted on YouTube in the next couple days or so. I see some more interesting ice cream flavors. Goat cheese ice cream. I think I would I would be willing to try that. I don't know. I say that now, but I don't know. Someone says we are going to be making ice cream in a bag. Yes, that is what we are going to be doing. Um, but before we get started, I wanted to give you guys a little science behind um, how ice cream is made in a bag. So adding a solute, um, which I believe is the salt, um, correct me if I'm wrong, adding a solute to a solvent, um, the ice, lowers the freezing point of that solvent. This change in freezing point is referred to as colligative property. In this experiment, you will use the lowered freezing point of water to chill another mixture, which will be our ice cream, to a solid state. Very interesting. Okay, so you will need um, a large Ziploc bag. They recommend a quart. Um, I have one about this size. You can see I already have my ice in there. You will need, and then it says, oh no, a gallon Ziploc bag and a quart. So this is my gallon. This is my big one. Um, and this is my, I don't... I think this is a quart, it's just a slightly smaller size because that's going to go inside. So one big one, one small one. Um, make sure they're sealable because you don't want um, your salt water to leak into your ice cream. I don't think that would taste very good. Um, so you'll need two bags, one smaller than the other, sealable. Um, make sure there's no holes or anything like that. Um, and then you can either use um, one cup of half and half. Um, which I have, which is half cream and half milk, or um, you can take, um, you can like make your own half and half with half a cup of milk um, and half a cup of whipping cream. Um, so either or works. Um, one cup of half and half or half a cup milk and half a cup of whipping cream. Um, and feel free to experiment with different types of milk. Um, I'm not sure what would work best. Um, the milk that I have is um, non-dairy, um, so I'm not sure if that will work or not. Uh, let me know if that's what you're using in the comments. Okay, you will also need a fourth a cup of sugar, um, a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. You will need salt. Um, they recommend rock salt. Um, I did not have rock salt, I have just plain table salt, um, but I heard that works pretty well too. So we'll see how that goes. You'll need ice, um, I think they say about two cups, um, but we can experiment with that too, see if we need a little more or less ice. Um, you can also use a thermometer. I'm gonna use, I have this thermometer, um, digital thermometer, because I'm gonna test um, the temperature of the ice um, and the ice after we put salt and the temperature of the ice cream and all that fun stuff. Um, you guys don't have to do that. You can just watch me do it. Um, but I thought it would be fun um, to test our temperatures and see um, how they differ. Um, you'll need a couple measuring cups um, and then whatever you're going to use to serve your ice cream. Okay, let's get started to the fun part. So in one quart Ziploc bag, so your smaller Ziploc bag, um, we're going to need a fourth a cup of sugar. One fourth cup of sugar. Um, so I already have that measured out. I just have plain white sugar. I'm going to pour that into my bag. One fourth cup of sugar. Okay, and then I'm going to need either one cup of half and half, which is what I have, or you can do half a cup of milk and half a cup of whipping cream, which is basically just half and half, half milk, half cream. Okay, so I'm gonna use my liquid measuring cup. Let me see if I can back it up just a little bit so you can see. Okay. So I'm going to measure 
one cup half and half, or like I said, half a cup milk, half a cup cream. I need to measure one cup. Just about there. That is one cup for me. Let me make sure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to pour that into my small bag as well. And I'll set that off to the side. And then it says I need a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. So one fourth of a teaspoon. So just very, very little. So you guys can see that. Um, and honestly, you probably don't even have to measure. You just need a teeny tiny bit of vanilla. It's just a splash. Um, and I'd love to know too if you're adding anything um, to your ice cream. I have some sprinkles for when we're done. I'm being super hopeful that it's going to work out. <laughs> I've brought my sprinkles already. So I need a fourth a teaspoon. Not a tablespoon, a fourth a teaspoon. Um, because vanilla extract is very, very strong flavor. Um, so you only need a teeny tiny little bit to get that vanilla flavor. Okay. Set that to the side. and then it wants me to securely seal the bag and mix well. I want to make sure this is sealed. I'm going to kind of just mix it up. Make sure the sugar and milk can combine a little bit. If you want to take a spoon, you can do that too. Um, but we're going to be shaking this up too um, in a little bit, so it should combine pretty well. That's mixed pretty good. Um, you also might want to be a little gentle because um, you don't want your bag to tear. You don't want to get that salt water in your ice cream. Okay, so then in your larger Ziploc bag, I have a gallon, um, but I think you could probably work with a little bit smaller one. And it wanted me to put two cups of ice, um, so we'll see if that works okay. I might need to add a little bit more. Um, and I want to take the temperature of my ice before. I put the salt in um, just because making ice cream is like an experiment. So I want to test all my variables. Um, again, you guys don't have to do this. It's just a little extra thing that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to turn my thermometer on. It's a digital thermometer. And I'm going to see how cold my ice is. It's shooting down pretty fast. I'm down to 33 degrees. All right, that's what it's sticking at for me, about 33.6 degrees, um, which is just about freezing temperature. We might be a little bit off. Um, the freezing temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're just about there. Now it's going up because I took it out, but it was about 33. Now I want to add my salt. So it says add between a half and three fourths of sodium chloride, which is salt, to the gallon bag. Um, so I have my half a cup. I have my salt. I'm using table salt, um, but you can use rock salt. Um, they say that works better. Um, yes, we'll see. Um, and if you're having trouble viewing the live, I see some comments. Some people are having a little bit of trouble. No worries. This will be recorded. Um, it'll be on Facebook directly after we're done here today, and then it will be on YouTube. Um, just search GSWPA on YouTube, and you'll find it.
how much salt do you put in with the ice? I'm starting with a half a cup, um, but it says you can add between a half a cup and three fourths of a cup. Um, so a large amount of salt. Again, rock salt works the best, like the kind of salt you would put on your driveway um, in the winter to melt the snow. Um, but table salt should work too. I'm gonna give that a little mix. And then I'm going to measure the temperature again to see if it has gone down enough. It feels pretty cold. Um, and be careful because it does, the ice will get very, very cold. Um, so try not to touch um, the bag too much. You don't want to hurt your hands or your skin. Okay. I'm going to measure again with the salt in here. Oh, and it's gone down a ton. It's still going down very quickly. It looks like I've gone down to, it's going up again now, but it was all the way down to 18, 16, 15, we're still going down, so it's gotten much colder, you can see that real quick, it went down to 15 degrees, so much colder now that we've added the salt, um, and we're going to go over a little bit um, about why that happened. So I'm going to take my ice cream mixture, which is my sugar, my half and half, um, and my vanilla. I'm going to make sure that's sealed nice and tight because I don't want my salt water to get in. I'm going to put that inside my bag here. I'm going to seal this nice and tight as well. And it says gently rock the bag from side to side. Do not hold the bag in your hands. It will be cold enough um, to damage your skin. Uh, so just be careful. Make sure you have an adult with you. You don't want to touch it because it'll be super cold. Um, and we're going to just rock it back and forth. Um, and it says for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so hopefully we can get that maybe a little bit faster than 10 to 15 minutes. Shake it, rock it. I'm going to be a little bit gentle because we don't want to rip our bag. Continue rocking until contents of the quart bag have solidified, so until our ice cream starts to get solid. Um, and then we'll measure the temperature again. Um, so while we're doing that, um, we can go over a little bit about what is happening while we're doing this. So it says, why is sodium chloride or salt added to the ice? Um, sodium chloride is added to the ice to lower the freezing point of ice. It becomes much lower when you add salt. Our next question, why are large crystals of sodium chloride used instead of small crystals? Um, so why do they recommend using rock salt instead of table salt? Any ideas in the comments before I give you the answer? Nothing yet. It says, large crystals dissolve more slowly than small crystals. This allows time for the ice cream to freeze more evenly. Try to get the ice more evenly distributed around here. I might have to add a little more ice, we'll see. Um, our next question is why is sodium chloride placed on icy patches on highways and on steps in the winter? Why do you think that is? Why do we use ice in the winter? when the roads are icy, or the steps outside our house are out icy. I see people saying they don't know. <laughs> That's okay. We're here to learn together.
Someone says, can we add sprinkles? Yes, you can add whatever you like to your ice cream. Someone says, how long should we shake it for? It's at about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't take quite that long. Um, we'll see in a couple minutes if it starts to solidify. Um, but once your inner bag with the ice cream ingredients starts to, to freeze, then you know. Okay, so why is sodium chloride placed on icy patches on highways and on steps in the winter? It says when sodium chloride is placed on the highway or on steps, the freezing point is lowered and the ice melts. Interesting. Someone says to clean the ice. Pretty much. Why is sodium chloride, which is salt, used rather than sucrose? I'm not sure what sucrose is. Let's learn. Sodium chloride is used for three reasons. First, some solids such as sugar do not dissolve in ice water as well as salt. Second, salt is an abundant mineral in the form halite and is not expensive. Finally, when sodium chloride dissolves, it separates into two particles, lowering the freezing point further. It's called iconic dissociation. Dissociation. Huh. Very interesting. Lots of science behind the ice cream making. Looking to see if I got any that's solidifying at all. You can see that it's very cold in there. Might need some more time. Okay. Another fun note about what is going on here with our ice cream. It says when a substance freezes, the particles arrange themselves into an orderly pattern. This arrangement is called a crystal. When sodium chloride is added to the water, a solution is formed. The forming of the solution interferes with the orderly arranging of the particles in the crystal. Therefore, more kinetic energy, or heat, must be removed from the solvent, which is the water, for freezing to occur. This results in a lower freezing point. Furthermore, the more particles of solute, or salt, added, the more kinetic energy must be removed. The greater the concentration of solute, the lower the freezing point of the solvent. Um, so it seems like if you're having trouble, um, once their dog's trying to eat their ice cream, that is very adorable. Um, if you're having trouble, if it's not freezing, you might want to add a little more salt because um, that will make um, your ice cooler. I think I might add a little more salt to mine. We started with a half a cup, so you could add three quarters of a cup. I'm going to add about another fourth of a cup. I'm just going to measure about half, half of this half a cup. So we'll see if that moves us along a little faster. How are you guys doing? Let me know in the comments. How's our ice cream coming along? We need to add more salt. Are we doing okay? a little bit more of a shake. Very cold. Might need to let this sit for a little bit. I'm going to grab a towel. I'm leaking a little bit. How's it coming for you guys? Doing good? Well, it looks like I'm starting to get a little bit of solidifying over here. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's at about 10 to 15 minutes. 
you might, you might need to add a little more ice or a little more salt. Um, the more salt you add, the colder it will get. Um, so be sure to be careful. Someone said it actually worked. Awesome. I think mine's coming along. It's just taking a little bit of time. I need to add some more ice and salt. Yep, I'm getting a little bit of ice cream started. Someone says theirs are starting to freeze too. Awesome. Um, also, while we're doing this, while we have some time, I'd love to know in the comments um, what your favorite ice cream is. What is your favorite flavor ice cream? I think mine is cookie dough. Can't go wrong with cookie dough. Someone says they did theirs in a jar. That's cool. I'd have to try that. Let me know how that's working out. We did one cup, half and half, and one cup heavy cream. Interesting. Someone says, have you ever tried pizza or mac and cheese um, in your ice cream? <laughs> that would be fun. Someone, says they're trying, someone else says they're doing it in a jar. Awesome. Super fun. See lots of chocolate. People's favorite is chocolate, vanilla. Rocky Road. Someone should shake um, shake your bag faster. That might help help get your ice cream going. Chocolate, lots of chocolate. Rocky Road and cookies and cream. Someone says cookie dough rules, and my name is also Samantha. We're on the same wavelength. Birthday cake. Ooh, that sounds good. Someone says I need. Um, that I, me, <laughs> you need more ice. Get the little bag down in there, submerge a little, and mush and squish. Thank you for the tip. I think I might add a little more ice. Someone says shake faster. Good tips. Thank you, guys. Um, someone likes pumpkin ice cream. Ooh, I'll have to try that. Cookies and cream, mint chocolate, moose tracks, vanilla, yum. A little more ice. Someone says they can't wait to eat it. Okay, I'll be right back. Some more ice, and I think I'm gonna rock a little faster. It looks like we're solidifying in there at least a little bit. We got some more helpful hints here. Let me read them off. Shake for two minutes without stopping. Okay. I'm gonna shake a little bit, a little bit more now. Black raspberry? Ooh, that sounds good. Someone says they'd rather buy ice cream at the store. It's a little bit of hard work, huh? Let's see how it turns out, and then I'll, I'll put my last judgment. Someone says theirs is done. We're making vanilla, but ours is blue. Ooh, yeah, you could add food coloring. You could make it a different color. That would be fun. I mean, you could add all kinds of different flavors.
starting to solidify. We're making M&M Oreos and cookie dough. Ooh, that sounds good. I think my bag might have a little hole in it. That might be part of the problem, too. Someone says they added strawberries. Ooh. Let me know what else you guys are adding. This all sounds delicious. solidify. Maybe just another minute. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay. Let's open her up. See what we got. Ooh, peaches. There's chocolate, peaches. That sounds delicious. Someone says they want to make a new flavor. That's the great thing about making your own ice cream. You can make whatever flavor you want. Even if it's like pickle. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, it looks like I got ice cream. I'm so excited. This is my first time. So I have, put this down a little bit. So it definitely solidified. Super cool. I have a little bowl here and my ice cream scoop. Someone says theirs is delicious. So happy to hear that. I can't wait to taste mine. Ooh, I got ice cream. This is so exciting. Add a couple scoops in there. It's like soft serve. Awesome. Okay. Added a couple scoops. I'm going to set this to the side. I've got it in my cute little bowl. I have some sprinkles and add some sprinkles. Oh, it looks so good. Give it a taste. Mm. Oh my goodness. It is so good. Mm. Delicious. I um, I think I had so much fun, even though it was a lot of work, that I would do this instead of going to the store. Maybe not all the time, but for National Ice Cream Day, I'll do it. Hmm. Okay. I have to stop, but it's very, very good. Okay. So. That was our um, homemade dairy ice cream. Um, but I wanted to have an option if you're non-dairy. So we're gonna make some ice cream without any cream, without any milk. All you need is frozen bananas. So I've frozen some bananas overnight um, and I've let them thaw out just a little bit. Well, maybe a little too much. <laughs> And all I need is a blender. And I just have a tray of cut up frozen bananas. Someone said it didn't work. I'm sorry. I think I might have let my bananas thaw out a little too much. But I'll know for next time. So you want to take frozen slices of banana. Toss them in a blender, and we're going to make some non-dairy ice cream. Someone says, are we making a swap today? We sure are. Okay, so I'm putting my frozen bananas into my blender. Putting this on top. It's going to get a little bit loud 
Um, I want to try to warn you before I turn my blender on, you might want to turn your volume down. Here we go. Pretty good. I'm gonna throw that in my other ice cream container. Mine's a little more liquidy than I would have liked. Um, I let them thaw out a little bit too much. Um, so make sure to throw them in the blender as soon as you take them out of the freezer. Someone says they've made frozen banana ice cream just like me. Awesome. And then I also had he says they're just watching right now. Now we're going to make it later. That's perfect. If you don't have the stuff now, you can make it whenever you want. And I have another topping. Some mini chocolate chips, which I think go really well with banana. Um, and if you want your ice cream to be a little bit more solid, um, rather than like a soft serve, you can toss it in the freezer for a little bit. Let me grab my spoon. Mm -mm. And I have my banana ice cream. A little bit melty, but that's okay. Mm. Delicious and so easy. It's just frozen bananas in a blender. Non-dairy. Yum, yum. I'm going to toss this in the freezer so it gets a little hard. Alrighty. So we've, in the time we've been together, we've already made two different types of homemade ice cream. Again, you can make it how we did the first time with salt water and ice. Um, in our half and half and sugar and vanilla, or you can just take some frozen bananas. I would recommend chopping them up first because um, it's hard to chop a frozen banana. Toss them in the freezer overnight, take them out, toss them right into the blender, and you've got homemade ice cream. Awesome. I have a few more comments, let me see. Someone says their ice cream was yummy, but next time they're going to shake it a little longer. Yeah, I think for me too. Definitely experimental. You got to learn the best way. Okay, so the last thing we are doing today is making a swap. We're going to make an ice cream swap to go along with our ice cream theme. Um, so I have some glue. I have hot glue because um, I find that works best for me, but you can use any type of glue. If you are using hot glue, make sure you have an adult with you. I have some brown construction paper for my cone. And I have two cotton balls for my ice cream. And I had a pair of scissors. <laughs> Give me one sec. Okay. So Super easy. You are going to take your brown construction paper and cut out a triangle. Um, I would say the shape of an ice cream cone, make it about the width um, of your um, cotton ball so that it's just about the right size. My scissors are right in front of me. <laughs> so I made mine about that. Looks like it's about the right width. So I'm going to take a little dab of hot glue. I'm going to dab it on my brown construction paper.
we go. Okay, I'm going to put my cotton ball right on there. Again, be careful, make sure you have an adult if you're using hot glue. So you could do one just like this. Or you could take a second cotton ball and do a double scoop of ice cream. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to put that on top of my other one. Looks just like that, a little ice cream cone. You might want to use um, cardboard instead of construction paper just so it's a little more sturdy. Um, but I think my construction paper worked out well. And then if you want, you can take some markers. So I have some markers here. Um, and I can make sprinkles. I just dot in some color on the cotton balls. I take some red. Maybe I'll have a little cherry on top. Maybe a little orange. Someone has asked me if I'm a Girl Scout or a troop leader. I am actually a girl program specialist with Girl Scouts Western Pennsylvania. I am a member of the GSWPA Girl Scout Council. Maybe a little bit of yellow. There we go. I've got my little double ice cream swap. Then I can just take a safety pin, poke that through very carefully, and you might need an adult for this part. I've got a cute little ice cream swap. Super easy, scoop, super fun, right? That is my ice cream. Love it. Okay. So, we make sure we don't have any more fun ice cream facts. Oh, a good thing to know, the salt and ice mixture um, that was in your Ziploc bag um, can be poured down the sink, and the Ziploc bags can be washed and reused. Good to know. Alrighty. So, now that we've made... We've learned a lot about the history of ice cream and National Ice Cream Day, um, and we've learned um, a little bit about ice cream science. We've also made two different kinds of homemade ice cream, um, one with frozen bananas and one with cream and ice and salt. Um, you have earned your ice cream patch, so congratulations. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I had so much fun. This is the first time I've made my own ice cream. Um, I thought it was super cool, and I love the science behind it. Um, so thank you again all so much for joining me. We'll put in the comments where you can order your patch. Um, make sure for your take action to share your ice cream with someone else. Um, maybe even teach someone how to make the ice cream that you made. Um, and that's it. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you again for joining me. Um, happy National Ice Cream Day, um, come, or an early National Ice Cream Day, which is this Sunday. Um, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.